Hey, I'm Dave Watkins, Watkins Films, and this Halloween season is flying by. I almost feel like we need another extra couple of weeks, you know, Halloween and then two more weeks of just like more Halloween. That's how I feel about it. Um, if you get a chance to, and if you haven't done so already, now would be a good time to like this video. If you just hit the like button below there, not, yeah, just hit that like button, that'd be good. Now, today we're going to talk about a new 4K UHD release from Vinegar Syndrome. The Tenant, starring Roman Pulowski, who also directed the film. Now, this is a very impressive packaging, and we're going to take a good look at it here in just a little bit. They went over and beyond on this packaging here. This was a first-time watch for me on the film. It is a somewhat long film, um, but and it is a psychological thriller with a little bit of horror elements in it. Uh, it it's considered part of a trilogy, which kind of wasn't by design, but it's called the, the Apartment Trilogy by Roman Pulowski. I, I recently did a review on Rosemary's Baby, which was the second film in that trilogy. The first one is one a movie called Repulsion that I've never seen. There's not a, a 4K release of it at this point. That one's actually in black and white, but they do have a Criterion Blu-ray release that looks, looks pretty good from looking at it and reading about it. I, I came close to buying it the other day, but I ended up um, not getting it yet. I, I will probably eventually watch it um, just so I have seen all three of the Roman Pulowski apartment films. But he also stars in it. Though he is not credited, but he is the, really the only character that gets a, any major amount of screen time. There are, there are a couple other, other supporting characters who get top billing in it, like French actress Is Isabella Ajani, who would go on to be to star or co-star in Pulowski's Nosferatu. It also co-stars Melvin Douglas as the landlord. Melvin Douglas, I know him from the old Dark House. When he, he's very old in this one. He's also in some other horror movies, like uh, when he was older, like The Changeling and um, Ghost Story. But uh, in the old Dark House, he kind of plays the main character. Boris Karloff gets top billing, but um, Melvin Douglas plays the kind of protagonist of that film. Here he's, he's seemingly an antagonist, and we're going to get to that here in just a bit. So this is a French film, and it, by the end of the film, it is very unsettling. It, especially, it's one that just kind of left me, after watching it, just, just every now and then I'll think about some of the things that happen in the film, just trying to connect some of the dots. There is a lot, there is a lot left somewhat unexplained, but there is somewhat of a, a possible explanation for everything. Now, like... Very similar pacing to Rosemary's Baby, and so I, I really do feel these are connected in spirit, because the just because of the pacing and the fact that it takes place in an apartment, and it's about apartment dwellers in the city. Now, this is called the tenant, and not the apartment, and I'm gonna, and we're going to get to that here in just a, just a bit. So, what happens in the film? Uh, Roman Pulowski's character, and this is something too. Like I, did, I had no idea what this was about. Uh, it's called the tenant. About a guy moves into an apartment. I knew it was like those. I knew those those items were in, in place. And if you haven't seen the film, it, it's almost better not knowing what it's about. But we're going to go ahead and talk about it anyway. And assuming that you have seen it, or maybe you'll listen to what I say and then forget what I said while you're watching it. But so Roman Pulowski's character, he's kind of, I guess he's a bureaucrat or something. But he typically dresses very nice. This is a nineteen. 76 film. He's dressed in a suit most of the time, but he, and he's kind of mild mannered, and he he finds this apartment that he wants to move into, and and apparently these apartments in this in this city are hard hard to come by. But he talks. Um, he, he, what happened in this apartment before he moves in? There was a lady in there who jumped out of the front, or out of the back window, and then threw an awning, and she tried to kill herself. And right now she's in the hospital in very bad shape dying so he talks the landlord into he talks him into letting him move in there and then oddly enough he goes to see the lady who who previously owned the apartment in the hospital and she's all in a in body cast and in a lot of pain and her friend is there and her friend meets him and then he kind of begins kind of a friendship with her friend but she doesn't know that he's just there to move into her apartment. She, she thinks that he is a friend of hers. So he goes back to the apartment, 
and he moves in, and all her stuff's still there, including her dresses, and he opens the closet one, earlier in the film and takes a dress out and is looking at it. And everywhere he goes, people he people seem to he, he goes to this little little like coffee shop and he's sitting at the same table she sat at every time she came in there. They point that out to him and then they give him like a cup of of hot chocolate. She always drank hot chocolate. He wants coffee, but they're like she always drank hot chocolate. We're gonna give you hot chocolate. And then she always uh, smoked Marlboro cigarettes and he wants to he smokes a different type of cigarettes but they keep kind of pushing those the marlboro cigarettes on him so all this is going on and he starts to think that all the people in the apartment complex and around it want him to become the previous tenant and the more the longer the movie goes on the more evidence of this is apparent now so he does uh, he does odd things that go against what his character set up to be like he moves in he talks the landlord into letting him going to the apartment. Sometimes he sometimes he goes from being meek and mild to somewhat assertive, but he has a, a, a party at his house with his friends, a, a kind of housewarming party that he's not supposed to be doing, and he already told the landlord he wasn't going to do it. And it they end up getting drunk, and they're staying up all night, and then his neighbors are like knocking on the door, and they're like, you are being really loud. It's the middle of the night. What are you doing? And then so he has to kick all his friends out. And then the next day, he goes down and apologizes to Melvin Douglas's character, and then... But while he goes down, he has a bunch of trash and he, he's dropping trash down the stairs and he goes and talks to him and he apologizes. He says it won't happen again. He goes out and throws the trash out, but when he comes back up, he's going to pick up the trash that dropped on the stairs and, and it's all gone. It's, it's disappeared, which is, which that's what, that's a very telling scene there. And we're going to get into that here in a, not, not too much longer. Uh, I'm not, I mean, I'm not want to go through the whole thing, but th like weird things start happening. Like he... He starts seeing his neighbors. There's a toilet across the, the across the way where I, where people have to go to you know use the toilet. And he starts seeing his neighbors just standing there over the toilet for hours, just standing there. And he's like, and he's telling his friends about it. And he's like, this is weird. They're just standing there for hours. And at one point, one of his friend brings him back to his like his friend brings him back to his friend's apartment just to show him how to handle the neighbors. And he puts his music up real loud. The neighbor comes knocking on the door, and he tells the neighbor that that he's going to listen to the music and he don't really care what he thinks. The neighbor's like, my wife's sick. And he's like, I don't care. You know, he's no, he turns the neighbor away. He turns the neighbor away. And then he's like, that's how you handle your neighbors. And then Roman Pulowski's character is like, what if she really is sick? And he's like, it don't matter. He's like, he's, he's like, if I'm sick, I'm not going to go knocking on people's doors. Now I did live in an apartment. It's been like a while back. It's probably been like 20 something years ago. And I had similar problems with my neighbors. Um, it's very frustrating living in an apartment. And a couple of times I had this one neighbor next to me where I would be, I would be watching a movie on the TV and she'd be knocking on the door telling me my TV's too loud. Yeah. And one time she even called the cops on me. So, and she'd always be like my, my ears and all this. And I'm like, you know, I'm just watching a movie in here and it's not even the middle of the night, you know? So, so that type of thing, frustrating thing does happen. And I move into another apartment and, so, and in the middle of the night, the people above me, they had kids, and they sounded like a, like a herd of elephants stomping on, on the ceiling above me. But I didn't go go up there knocking on the door and complain about it. I mean, it, it happens, you know. It's just, it's just what happens when you're in an apartment. You have to deal with people being loud, and it really sucks, and I would not recommend it. Now, I'm going to get into more of the deeper themes of the film here in just a minute, and we're going to talk about the ending. But before I do that, we're going to go ahead and take a look at this badass box okay so let's see this window it's like a window of an apartment and it opens up and inside voila you see the tenant in a slip cover and you pull it out so this is the slip cover and this is what for future reference if you order it off of amazon you might just end up with this and this is what you're going to get you have to go directly to the vinegar syndrome site and order it to get this packaging so here's uh Here's what you'll be getting off of Amazon, and it has two discs in here. It has a Blu-ray and a 4K disc. Alright, and here there is a there's a booklet in here with like with with pictures and a lot of uh, some you know a lot of information about the movie and, and some you got some interviews and some people's some people's thoughts on it. So it's got a booklet and there's this this isn't yeah, this is just the back backdrop, which which is just Roman Pulowski's character. 
Um, so let's get into the ending of the film and kind of the ending. I'm going to talk, and after that, we're going to talk about the transfer itself. So this whole thing that he starts to think all the neighbors are against him and they're, they're, they want him to turn into the previous tenant. Now he does have, he does see Isabel Ajani's character who was his roommate's friend, um, Jenny. He does see her several times throughout the movie and she ends up, um, you know, he ends up going to the theater with her pretty earlier on and then they, they make out in the theater and then they, they leave and then later on he sees her again. He ends up going to her house, getting drunk and passing out and, not they're almost going to have sex and then they don't and then but later on at the end when he he really starts to flip out about things going on in the apartment he goes to her house and she lets him in there and then she leaves and he starts thinking she's involved with it too because he thinks all these neighbors are he gets very paranoid it's a very interesting take on paranoia and anxiety and so after she he starts thinking that she did it he gets out like a photo album and for some reason he thinks that connects her to the apartment people and he rips up the photo album tears her apartment up and then he finds some cash in her in her um, her closet and takes the cash and he goes out and starts spending it. Now, often in films you give protagonists the kind of benefit of the doubt as the movie's going on. You kind of think that they're on the side of right, but at the further this movie goes, you start to realize that something is not right with the protagonist of the film. And the movie is called The Tenant and not The Apartment for a reason because it's not about the apartment. And the apartment, you know, is another film with Jack Lemmon in it. And I was thinking maybe they didn't call it that because, because of the you know the comedy film with Jack Lemmon and and all that. But like here, it's very much about the tenant. It's him. He's the problem, not the apartment. And throughout the film, people are telling him that he's making noise at night. He goes to the cops, and the cops are like, "You need to stop making noise at night." He's like, "I haven't been making noise." And as the audience, you don't see him making noise. But then it turns out, and there's it become you begins to see like other people like these old, old old couple accidentally hits him with their car and he starts seeing them as the old couple like Melvin Douglas's character and his wife who run the run the hotel and then you start to realize this guy's not right and he also starts to dress up like like the previous tenant he dresses up in her dress he goes and buys a wig and he he, he looks he's completely in drag and he kind of starts to think that he is her so it it seems that he is a paranoid schizophrenic and everything that's going on is come coming from that. And so it's very disturbing in that way, especially when it's presented. You're presented almost as you are him. And he doesn't know all the stuff that his his schizophrenic side does, and the audience doesn't either, until you realize later on a lot of the things that happened were because of his second identity, the schizophrenic identity or the multiple personality disorder, probably, yeah, the multiple personality disorder. That identity was doing a lot of the things that, that you were assuming that the apartment goers were doing. And so it's very effective. Uh, and I'm not going to go, I'm not going to spoil the end in, but I will tell you that I've had it figured out pretty quick. I, it wasn't that I knew it was going to happen. I, I, the idea popped into my head and I was like, that would be really messed up if that happened. And then it happens in the film. But I, I would recommend watching this film. I will say it, it is a slow burn of a film. It does, it does, it is slow going. It's not like, it is somewhat frustrating as, as it's going just because of some of the things that the main character does or doesn't do. There, there are frustrations to that. And it's not necessarily going to be a, a very fun watch, but it is a very, I admire it. It's a very, just like I admire Rosemary's Baby, it is very admirable movies. Now, as far as the transfer here on the film, it right away when you when you turn it on and you see the logo come up, um, that was a Paramount Paramount logo, um, you see a lot of film grain. It's an overabundance of film grain. And the opening credits kind of follow suit with that. But then once it gets into the film, it's, the film grain's still there, but it's not distracting anymore. And, and what you're seeing, this is a 4K. I'm going to read what it is um, about the transfer. It says you've got a 125-minute feature presentation of the tenant presented in Dolby Vision HDR and a newly restored from its 35mm original camera negative so it overall looks good. It looks it looks very healthy as far as the film grain going going in. At first it's too much, but then it looks very film like, a very organic type of feel feel to it. And it kind of adds to what's going on on screen. Now, through that you do see some some clarity on on close-ups and details. Now, a lot of the inside of the apartment 
has a certain, it is like a 70s film, but it kind of has that certain type of 70s look going to it, kind of a little little drab drabness going on. And the apartment's not very attractive. And so the, you know, it is, and you start to feel as, as he's there, that, you know, the apartment dweller, you do start to feel that kind of isolation going on as the film progresses forward. And the outside stuff, it it kind of fall, follows suit. It all it looks looks pretty film film like in general. Um, so as far as the rating of this film, I'm going to give it a, a four star rating. I'm going to give this packaging a five star rating. This is really awesome packaging. I'm, I'm going to give it the 4K transfer. I'm going to give it. I'm going to give it a four. I think it's well done. They may have been able to clean it up a little bit, but I don't know if we necessarily want them to clean it up. Anyway, if you've seen this film before, let me know what you think about it. And um, if you want to take a look at some other film like other film reviews, like Rosemary's Baby, it's I got that up there. I may eventually do one on Repulsion if I ever get that one. And if you haven't done so already, if you like this video and subscribe to my channel, I'm Dave Watkins. Thanks for watching.